In today's video, we're checking out the top five airsoft guns you could buy for under $100. And don't worry guys, I covered all of the bases. I got an airsoft sniper, shotgun, pistols, and even an AEG. So let's jump straight in. So for each airsoft gun in today's video, we'll be doing a full unboxing and a shooting test as well. And for the shooting test, I got a new $500 electric airsoft target that I cannot wait to use. I definitely paid too much for it, but with that said, let's jump straight in. All right, so jumping straight into this video, let's go ahead and go with the first one. This one is called the SEMA CM037. And as you can see, it's basically like a little AK or some of you might know it as the AK4U. So when you look at the box, it has some kind of information right here. As you can see, it is semi and fully automatic and has some of these stats right there if you are curious. And as well as some of the instructions on how to set this guy up on the back of the box. But let's open this guy up and see what we got. Hey guys, real quick, I wanted to give a shout out to today's sponsor, War Thunder. War Thunder is an incredibly comprehensive vehicle combat game. You can play as 2,000 different tanks, planes, helicopters, and battleships in dynamic player versus player battles. Every vehicle is modeled down to their individual components offering a super detailed combat experience. You can play War Thunder now on the PC, PlayStation 4 and 5, and Xbox Series S and X. War Thunder offers an amazing range of vehicles that span 100 years of development from the 1920s to present day. War Thunder also has one of the most dynamic and detailed vehicle damage models in gaming. There's no vehicle hit points, vehicles suffer actual damage to their components and crew instead. A damage x-ray shows you what type of damage you're taking on your vehicle and your enemy's vehicle. My favorite part about War Thunder is that diversity of vehicles because it's like getting three games in one. There's just so many different types of vehicles to choose from from all different ages and historical backgrounds. For example, if you like being a pilot, you can fly old school planes, modern fighter jets, or even attack helicopters. Play War Thunder now on the PC, PlayStation, or Xbox using my link in the description. Not only is it a free to play game, but if you register using my link, there is a large free bonus pack containing multiple premium vehicles, premium account, boosters, and much more. Thank you so much War Thunder for sponsoring the video. Sponsors make it possible to do cool new videos and giveaways for you guys. Now back to the video. So as you guys can see in this video today, probably a lot of them will be covered in this like plastic little sheet before you can actually access the airsoft gun. A lot of the airsoft guns actually have this at this price range, but yeah, just in case you're curious. So without further ado, we get a little cool instruction manual and then let's take our trusty knife and see what we got. It is at least satisfying to open this up plastic so There's one plus to that. Yeet. So taking a little closer look actually what is inside the box. So you get a little bag of BBs. Like all airsoft guns, I'd probably stay away from most of the manufacturer provided BBs in the bag, especially at this price range. Look at these little like lines in the actual BBs that will probably scratch the barrel. So I'd probably advise using against those. You actually get a cool little sling here. It's actually a green one, so that's kind of cool. It's up to you to trust this guy. Probably wouldn't at this price range. I don't know. I just don't really trust these slings or BBs that manufacturers provide, but it's obviously up to you. If this is your only sling, go for it. But if you have another one, I'd probably trust that more. And then we actually have a airsoft magazine that comes with. So let's see what this guy looks like. See, this guy is a little bit of a smaller version of an AK one. So pretty cool. Actually kind of fits this gun a little bit better because obviously this thing is a little bit on the smaller side versus normal AKs. You actually can put the BBs actually in this little compartment in the top right there. And then you just wind them up like so to actually feed them up into this little lip and then you can plug it in and you're ready to go. Let's check this guy out and see how it feels. Wow. Okay. This thing is actually like decently heavier than I thought, to be honest. I got this little tag right here. It looks like it does come with a adjustable hop-up, which is always good. So as far as the actual construction of the airsoft gun goes, the majority of it is pretty much a plastic, but it does feel pretty high quality. Obviously, it doesn't really have too many like creaks and rattles, so that's pretty good for this price range. And it has some really cool color scheme. Obviously, you have the black right here, some silver right here for the bolt, and then a little bit of a gray going on with the uh, little body right there. But like I just mentioned, this thing is majority plastic, so I'm pretty sure the whole body itself is plastic, as well as the stock, the grip, and the handguard right there. This thing actually does have some pretty good weight to it and you could tell there is some metal stuff actually involved in this build as well so that's kind of nice it's got a pretty cool iron sights as you guys can see just a tiny little u on the back and then a u with a little stem in the middle for the front one this is basically like the ak4u style if you've seen that in some video games if you're actually not familiar with ak's this is actually the fire select so you go from safe you go to full auto and then you go to semi-automatic right there pretty cool so if we pull back the bolt, it actually exposes the hop-up system. To actually make this guy work, you actually just pull this little stem back further and further to the back of the gun like so, and then that will actually make the hop-up work more and more and make the BB travel farther. So pretty simple and it's actually pretty easy to use, pretty sweet. In the airsoft magazine, it's actually made up of metal and plastic as well. It has some plastic actually on the top right here, but the actual shell of it is full metal, so it just kind of feels pretty high quality in your hand. Like all the airsoft guns in the video, we're gonna actually be testing this guy out as far as accuracy and range, and then also the chronograph as well. So without further ado, let's go test this guy out. All right, so first test we're gonna do of today's video is going to be a chronograph test. So we're gonna actually be measuring the FPS of the different guns in the video. And we're gonna be measuring all these tests with 0.2 grams. And then for the shooting test and accuracy test, we'll be using three two grams. 296.5 for the first shot, 295.6, pretty consistent, 
And then the third shot is 296.3, and this is using a 9.6 volt battery. So basically just under 300 FPS. You could use it at any field I know of. Obviously it's a little low for some American fields, but generally 300 FPS will do the job for a CQB field. And let's do some full auto, see how fast this guy's shooting. And then as far as the rounds per second, it is 14. All right, guys, before we actually get started with the shooting test, I kind of want to show you guys my new target. I paid $500 for this thing. It's called the Gunpower Target. Sheesh. Very nice. I agree. All right, so this thing comes with a really cool controller as well, and you can kind of control which kind of game you want to play. There's a whole bunch of different games. There's target practice, there's, there's zeroing, there's training, there's hostage situations, really cool actual games with this guy. I'm pretty sure you can download more as well. And then we'll just press our little button right here, and then I'll take us to the target. Oh my God, wow. So with this guy, you get 10 shots per target, and then I'll actually be able to show you guys a more sophisticated view of actually the accuracy of the different airsoft guns in the video. So I'm pretty excited to shoot this guy. Please leave a like on the video, guys. That would be greatly appreciated. This thing was not cheap, and I thought this would be awesome for the video. So if you guys do enjoy this, then make sure to leave a like. All right, so first up, let's start with a little bit of a closer range. This is about 30 feet away. Let's see what this guy's got. Nice. All right, so these are the groupings. Actually pretty good, damn. All in that red circle and a lot in that yellow too. So without further ado, let's wipe this and do another one and then we'll do a little bit of a further test. All right, so first we're actually gonna be doubling the range real quick and then we'll see how accurate this guy actually is with a little bit further range and then we'll go back even further. See if I could do a little bit of walking and shooting too. Pretty nice. I think this actually target records after the fact too. So if I shoot it like this, yeah, it's sick. Okay, so after the fact as well, it even records a couple of different shots too. So if you want to keep shooting, you'll keep having their shots recorded. So that's kind of nice. I think these ones without the numbers are actually the ones I did after the fact when I was trying to walk and shoot real quick, but they're actually pretty accurate as well within the uh, little frame right there, which is nice. But the actual 10 that I did on target, I think all of them are actually on target, which is pretty nice, or at least the majority of them. I don't know why I did that, but it seemed like it was a fun thing to do. As far as like CQB fields go, you're probably using like two five grams with this guy. But as far as the accuracy goes, it'll probably give us a good estimate even with the three two grams. But a pretty accurate test nevertheless for the accuracy of this guy, because obviously you can be playing with this guy mostly in CQB fields probably. So this is probably a pretty accurate, like maybe medium to medium far range for a CQB field. So if this guy can withstand at this range, it's pretty good. They kind of ended up, you know, outskirts right here. And then obviously a few on the outskirts right there. So obviously not like super accurate by any means, but as far as the $100 AEG goes, not too bad. Especially if you can be using this guy at majority for CQB ranges, this guy is pretty good. All right, guys, next up, we're moving on to a revolver. This is the Dan Weston 8-inch revolver. So without further ado, you guys can see on the box, it looks absolutely insane. This is a CO2 powered pistol, so pretty sweet. And it is actually made by ASG. So without further ado, let's go ahead and see what this guy looks like. Ooh, kind of interesting stuff in this guy. So it's like most airsoft guns, this guy does come with a little instruction manual right there. We don't need to look at that. This is the weirdest way I've ever seen airsoft manufacturer ever give out BBs like in an actual like, I don't know, yeah, usually it's just like a little bag. This guy has like a little cool, like, I don't even know what to call this, like a little <laughs> plastic container for it. So this is actually a very rare occasion where I'd actually probably suggest you could probably use these BBs that this guy includes. So that's pretty sweet. And I'm guessing they actually make this little hole on the top actually to be able to load these actual little like fake, you know, bullets so you can actually load the actual revolver itself. I'm guessing it just makes it easier so you can actually pour it in like so. Oh, I missed, oh boy. I got this, I got this, come on, there we go. So you can actually load it like that. Instead of actually taking like a handful of BBs from a bag and trying to like load one in, that actually makes it a lot easier to load. So this revolver actually comes with six different little fake bullets. It makes the experience actually loading this guy and shooting it way more fun. Looks like it also comes with a little tiny rail you can install somewhere, so that's nice, probably maybe on the bottom or top. And then it actually has this little tiny feeding mechanism, which I think is pretty cool. I'm pretty sure this is like a quick reload for this guy, obviously quick for a revolver. We'll actually utilize this guy later on. So let's actually take this guy out and see what it feels like. Oh wow, okay. At first I thought this thing was gonna be like super heavy or anything, Thing. This actually is like a perfect weight to be honest. You can see the little trades right there and as well as the logo for ASG back there. Obviously it's a pretty clean build. Like I like the color. It looks really nice, the paint on there. And it, obviously the like trades aren't too much. It just looks kind of nice and clean, honestly. Pretty cool build. Obviously my glove broke, but it does come in handy to actually feeling things when I take off my glove. But the actual grip itself actually feels pretty nice. I think it's some kind of like hard rubber or something like that. And there is the iron sights right there. It's just like a little white dot at the front and then a standard kind of like half square at the back right there to line it up. And then to actually utilize this system, you actually just take this guy and you push it forward like so and then you're actually able to take this guy out and load up the actual fake bullets and then if we want to actually load up this quick little reloader and see how this guy actually works as well real quick 
So right away, I noticed these guys are jiggling like jello. So I'm guessing the system actually doesn't hold the uh, little bolts in there. So it kind of sucks. But once this guy is out like that, you can kind of just try to drop these guys in. But uh, yeah, it's not the best way to do that. I actually have to take the revolver and actually like load these up like this because obviously these will fall out with gravity. Uh, obviously not the best system, but I guess it works kind of. So then you take this and you just press them in there and then they're all ready to go. Kind of more of a gimmick to be honest, but you know, at least you get one in there. And then once you have these loaded up, all you have to do is cock this guy back and shoot it with this guy too you don't actually have to cock it back to shoot it you can just like pull the trigger and it does like an automatic system right there and then to actually put the co2 in you simply just take this guy out like so you put the co2 cartridge actually in there and then you just take this guy rotate it until it is snug and fit and then the actual co2 cartridge is pierced and ready to go and then all you have to do is take this grip and put it back on now let's go test this guy out Woo, that's a hot boy. This one is 485.4 with 2.19 joules which is pretty significant for this guy try another shot Damn, yeah, this guy shoots hot. So the second shot is 462.6 with 1.99 joules. Third shot, 475.9 with 2.11 joules. All right, let's get this guy loaded up with the quick reloader and see what this guy's got. Woo, not too bad. Pretty accurate, actually. Not bad. This guy's iron sights are actually pretty accurate to actually where it lines up, which is pretty nice. I think that's it. Yep, let's go see what we got. This guy is actually not too bad for about 30 feet away. They're all within that little green circle, so pretty nice. We even got one in the yellow right there. This is obviously the downside with revolvers. It is not easy to load this guy quick. Jeez, imagine trying to load this guy on the field. That'd be crazy. All right, now we're sitting at maybe like 70, 80 feet away, give or take. I'm not too sure, but this is pretty far for a pistol. So let's see what this guy's got. This guy's a crazy FPS going for it. So let's see if that helps it out. Oh, got to aim up a little bit. Ooh. All right, people, and that is it. Let's see if I can do some crazy. Oh, no, 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 no. All right, did we even hit the target? Oh boy, okay, so we hit one way down here. We hit a uh, second one, actually pretty good. Uh, third one is actually pretty good too. And then the fourth and fifth were down here. And then the sixth one, I must have completely missed it, I believe. Um, yeah, so not the best that far, but it is possible to shoot pretty accurately. Obviously it is some user error as well. I'm not perfect. But if you actually are pretty good at this, I bet you if you aim it up a little bit and you kind of know you're aiming, you could probably hit them all in that little circle. Let's do actually one more test pretty far just because of curiosity. They said, get her a Volvo, it'll be fun. You know how hard this is to load, damn. Oh, missed. <laughs> All right, that is it. Oh. All right, what did we do here? Uh, could be worse. Looks like we got a shot way down there in this tiny little corner. Looks like we got another one down there in that corner. And then it looks like, oh, we had two good ones. So the first shot was really good. And then the third one wasn't too bad either. And then a couple are probably missing here. So I guess we got four of them on target, two of them actually in the circle and two of them we completely missed. So obviously this guy isn't super accurate or consistent at that range. This guy is probably more of a collector slash like backyard toy anyway. But if you're going to be using this guy on the field and you're willing to take 30 hours to reload this guy, kudos to you. But pretty cool gun, obviously. Let's move on to the next one. All right, guys. Next up is shotgun time. This is the SEMA Tri-Shot Shotgun, and there's a whole bunch of crazy names on here, like the CM365 Super 90 Shotgun Version, 365TN, all this crazy stuff. But it's basically just called the SEMA Tri-Shot Shotgun. This box is pretty simple, just like a full kind of cardboard-looking box. But let's go ahead and see what we got in here. Ooh. All right, this guy looks pretty sick. So with this guy, you can actually get cheaper versions. I think they're starting at like maybe 60 bucks somewhere around there. I think they worked their way up to like $100. This one I think is the $100 version because it has all these crazy like rails and colors and stuff on it. So let's open this guy up and see what we got. This guy again is covered in that like plastic like I mentioned before. Some of these probably will be coming in those plastics. So let's go ahead and open this guy up and take a little peek. Straight away, we get some simple stuff in here. Actually included a spieler, which is always nice. Oh boy, that guy's really in there. Holy. Ugh. There we go. But you can kind of slightly see in there so you can see how many BBs you have left. But which is really nice if you guys aren't familiar with these. You just kind of open this hatch up here, put the BBs in there. And then you simply just load the BBs by doing this. 
It's obviously nice to have an included speedo. Those seem to break quite a bit. So we actually have some yellow BBs. Probably would definitely not trust these. Any yellow BBs that come with something like this, especially at a $100 price range, probably don't want to trust those. It actually has an included extra little rail right there, which is pretty cool. I'm not sure where that would go, but I guess you can maybe install that on the little side of this guy or something like that. I'm not too sure. And of course we have a little included shotgun shell. It has the brand and it has three times 10. So basically you guys know what that means. This guy shoots three BBs per every single trigger pull. So with that said, this guy holds 30 shots actually in this little shell. And that means you get 10 shots shots per shelf. All right, let's take this guy out. I did opt for the actual full stock version. You can have ones that have a chopped off stock that are pretty cool. I remember all the time as a kid, I used to actually use one of these on the field. Super fun gun for the price. It obviously doesn't have crazy range or anything like that, but for the money, it's a very, very fun shotgun. And I remember as a kid, me and my dad actually chopped off the stock that we got in ours to actually make it a little bit more CQB compact. This guy is pretty much a full plastic construction. You get a little bit of metal things. Like I think this little guy at the top right there, where you actually put a uh, sling if you want is metal. And then where you actually put the shotgun shells is actually a metal piece right there as well. But for the most part, this guy is a fully plastic construction. You do get these included little iron sights on the top, which is pretty cool. The back one actually is kind of interesting. You actually have a little latch where you have to like take that off, and then this one actually just pops up. I've actually never seen it like that, but I guess that's pretty cool. And these iron sights are kind of like M4 style, so it has a little full circle right here, and you can actually flip it down and have a tinier circle, which would be absolutely insane. You can't really see anything through this guy unless you're looking directly at it with your eyeball. So I probably want to actually put this guy to the bigger version right there so you can actually see what the heck you're aiming at. So obviously, if you pull this guy back, if you're curious what's in there, there's really nothing in there. I don't even think you can adjust any hop up or anything like that. I don't believe it comes with a hop up. Obviously, this guy isn't shooting far enough to really even utilize a hop up. It is a shotgun after all. But as far as like the only annoying flimsiness I've noticing is this actually front grip where you actually pull back the action of the shotgun. I can see it being a little bit flimsy right there, but besides that, it's pretty solid. So you might be asking how to actually utilize this guy. So basically there is a little tiny latch right there. You pull that back towards the stock and this little window actually pops up like so. You take the shotgun shell, load it up like that. And then you plug that guy back in and then you're pretty much almost ready to go. All you have to do is turn off the safety like so, where it has that little red showing, that means you're off safe. And then all you have to do is pump this guy back and you're ready to go. So this was one of my favorite airsoft guns when I was a kid starting out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and shoot this guy and see if it's still fun. All right, people, it's shotgun time. Let's see what this guy's got. All right, it's actually my first time shooting this thing, so I'm kind of excited for some nostalgia when I was a kid. So let's see what this guy's got. Oh, <laughs> got to aim a little higher. So I think part of the problem is this target is actually not picking up every single time all three BBs hit. But as far as the actual range of this guy, I saw some hit actually down here on this little metal part. And then obviously we had some all the way throughout here. So it's actually not too bad. All right, let's do one more at that range and see what this guy's got. So these iron sights definitely aren't helping out at a uh, like, you know, reasonable range here. So let's actually go ahead and put these guys back down and see if we can just eyeball it real quick. Nice. We actually got one little pretty much bullseye right there, so pretty nice. But besides that, see that nine, five, and seven? I think that's like a good example from what I'm seeing with my eyes, actually how much the spread is. So let's actually go ahead and go back a little bit with this guy and see what the actual full potential of this guy is. All right, we'll see if this guy can actually go this far. I'll probably have to aim up a little bit. Oh. One hit. I think all three hit that time. Oh, all three hit that time. That was actually a pretty good grouping probably within a couple inches of each other. I think one hit the very side of the target. I think two hit the target. Then three hit the target. My <laughs> score is negative 10, bruh. My guy, what are you doing? So obviously this isn't a perfect test. Obviously I'm not a perfect shooter by any means, but this gives you a good example. Obviously you're not gonna be shooting anything probably past like 60 or 80 feet range. This guy's obviously iron sights aren't too good, but if you kind of know where to aim, you know, you could probably hit a human sized target, maybe like 60, 80 feet away somewhat consistently, but I wouldn't be really trusting this guy too much, you know, outside of maybe like 30 to 50 feet. I'm gonna get my nice camera and do some slow-mo shots actually on the target. So I can actually show you guys what the groupings are like with this guy. I hope you guys enjoyed the shotgun. Let's move on to the next one.
All right, next up we have a gas blowback pistol from ASG. This is the CZ P09. So, so far we went through a electric airsoft gun, a spring airsoft gun, and a CO2 powered revolver. Now this is a fully gas blowback powered airsoft pistol. It's got a pretty decently nice box here. Pretty simple obviously, but it looks pretty nice. So let's actually go ahead and see what this guy looks like. Oops, damn. Sorry, my boy, no one deserves this much pain and suffering. No, why do I always do this? I don't know if it's just me when I'm opening airsoft guns, but I always do that. I always try to pull this guy up and then it just rips, but damn, that's my bad. All right, so of course we get a little instruction manual included. And this is what we're working with. Pretty simple, kind of a nice little simple box inside as well. This guy is covered with some plastic. I did get the tan version. For some reason, the black ones were actually more expensive. I believe the whole lower frame of this guy is a nice hard plastic. And then the top is a metal side, which is pretty cool. Feels very nice in your hand, very solid construction. It's got nice little texturing, obviously on the frame right there and the actual grip itself. So if you are utilizing gloves when you play, it does feel pretty nice with those little engroovings. And obviously if you use your thumb or something with the other hand to actually aim in, it does feel pretty nice having those little engroovings on the body right there. The iron sights are pretty simple, a white dot in the front, two white dots in the back with a little half square. This guy has a full rail down there. You could add flashlights and lasers too right there. This is the actual magazine itself. This guy is a fully gas one. So obviously you put the green gas in that little hole down there. Pretty much a full size magazine. Feels pretty nice in your hand as well. Not too beefy, not too small, just a good size. And it's kind of nice with this little feeding lip when you actually load the BBs. As you can see, it has like a bigger little like hole at the bottom there. That's actually so if you take the little lip and you put it all the way down here, you can actually use a speed loader and speed load the BBs into this big hole to actually reverse feed it into the actual lip right there. Instead of just trying to load them at the lip, it just makes it a lot easier to actually load this guy. But the overall feeling with this guy is very solid, although it has a plastic lower frame and does feel like a very high quality pistol. So there's only one more thing left to do. Let's go ahead and shoot this guy and see how it does. 304.6, 294.6, and then the third shot is 292.4. And the jewels for that were about 0 0.8. All right, let's get this going, people. All right, at first with this pistol, we're gonna start with kind of like a little bit of a uh, medium range. So it's maybe like a 30 feet or something like that, maybe like 40 feet. This is kind of more of a realistic kind of pistol range for on the field. So let's go ahead and see what this guy's got. You actually have to aim a little lower than you think. So far, pretty good. This thing is definitely accurate for this far, but you have, definitely have to aim a little bit lower than the actual like iron sights because it's interesting. So we got a good little grouping right here. So it's pretty nice, obviously for about 30, 40 feet away. We'll do a cycle of two more 10 shots. So we'll do one super close and then one really far as well. All right, so this is kind of the ultra CQB, kind of like extremely close range test. It's probably like maybe 15 feet away, give or take. And this is kind of like more for headshots, like if you're in an extreme CQB environment and you need to hit those headshots if someone's popping out their head real quick, we'll see what this guy's got. All right. So obviously we had a weird like first couple shots that shot like two BBs and they hit right there and right there, the one and two. But as far as the rest of the target goes, they are really, really nice grouping, like maybe within a couple inches of each other, pretty sweet. You'll definitely be able to hit some headshots pretty close to this guy as long as you know where you're aiming. Just because the first two mess up, let's do another little test really close to this guy. So pretty cool. We actually got two perfect bullseyes. That's always pretty nice. We got a whole bunch in the red right there and a few in the blue. So as you could hit a cool headshot within like 15, 20 feet. So that's pretty sick. Let's go to the far distance test. This is pretty much like the farthest distance you're going to be probably shooting with a pistol realistically. You know, you could probably shoot obviously farther, but this is probably like a realistic range for a pistol. This is probably about 60 feet. Keep in mind, I did not actually adjust the hop up on this guy. So this is just completely stocked with three, two gram BBs. Oh. Definitely our worst score yet, but not too bad. We had a pretty bad like first and second shot, I believe. But as far as like a human frame goes, this would probably actually still hit a human frame. So it's kind of nice. You know, obviously if you're playing a game, you'd probably still hit someone maybe in their like upper, like, you know, vest or something like that. But as far as the Russia shots go, actually not too bad. I wanted to see how this guy would perform completely stock with three two gram BBs without adjusting the hop up. So actually pretty good. Obviously I had to aim up just a slight bit. So if you get this guy set up with the hop up properly, I bet you can actually shoot twice the amount of range with this guy pretty accurately. Overall, really good airsoft gun for hundred bucks. All right, guys, this is the the last airsoft gun of the video. You guys know I couldn't skip the airsoft sniper, so I had to throw one in there. This is the SEMA CM701, and it is a bolt action airsoft sniper rifle. Pretty simple box, just basically a cardboard looking guy. So let's actually see what this guy looks like. 
So the first thing I'm actually noticing with this guy is it's actually a like really nice texture on the actual body itself. Sometimes snipers have these super like smooth, like plastic feeling on the actual body itself. And I really like that. So it's kind of nicely added this really nice texture to the actual body and the stock of it. All right, so what's in the box? It does have some BBs. Uh, would I use these? Probably not, but it's up to you. It does have a little tool right there that it comes with a little Allen wrench. And there is the little magazine. Pretty simple. You just load the BBs in that little hole right there. And this guy is a full plastic construction. You do get a little instruction manual right there as well. And then I guess they do include a little speeler. Damn, these things are in there good. Jeez. Damn. Ooh, there we go. So it does help actually when loading up this airsoft magazine. But let's actually go ahead and check this guy out. Got an adjustable hop up as well, so that's very nice. So this is what it looks like in its entirety. Obviously not super sophisticated, but it does look very, very clean and simple and nice. You do have a little sling mount locator right there. And then another one back here on the stock as well. There is a common theme with a lot of the airsoft guns today. This guy is a mixture of fully plastic and fully metal. I believe the upper assembly right here, so the barrel and the actually bolt system itself and the trigger are all full metal, but then the lower, this whole body right here is actually a nice plastic. And then some kind of like rubbery feeling, super hard like pad for the back right there. And if you guys are curious, it's actually how you load up the Airsoft magazine right here. Pretty simple. And then obviously to eject it, you have to press that little button. There you go. There is a little safety right there. So obviously it's unsafe. And then if you go to the front right there, that is fire mode right there. I did actually opt for this to actually have a rail system up here. So obviously I can add a scope later on. We do the shooting test. So it's kind of nice. There's a full metal rail as well. This thing does feel super solid. I don't really notice any like creaks or rattles or any weird stuff like that. And this guy does have a fully adjustable hop up, which is very nice. It's that little tiny lever right there. I'm pretty sure if you move this forward, that is less hop and you can move it all the way to the back right here for the most hop. Pretty cool. And it makes it really nice actually to have it so accessible like that. It's very easy to adjust this on the fly, but to actually utilize this guy, all you have to to do is put the airsoft magazine loaded up like that. You put this guy off safe like so, and then you rack the bolt back and you're ready to go. This guy actually does have a pretty nice bolt feeling. It's not super light where it's kind of like annoying and flimsy and it's not super heavy where it's like annoying to actually pull back. So this guy does actually have a pretty good Goldilocks medium feel when actually pulling this guy back and it's a pretty nice little bolt. Let's go ahead and get this guy suited up with a little sniper scope and let's go ahead and shoot this guy and see how it does. All right, let's see what this guy's shooting. I also paired up with a really nice scope and got that all side in for the shooting test, so that's gonna be fun. So for 13.1 with 1.59 joules, 409.9 with 1.56 joules, then the last shot, 411.9 with 1.58 joules. Pretty consistent, which is pretty good for a beginner sniper. So we're gonna do some kind of close test to actually start this guy off with. Um, I think this is like 70, 80, maybe even 90 feet away, give or take. So I'd say probably about 80 feet. We'll start with this, kind of like a closer test for a sniper. This thing has way more range than I have access to, obviously. This is more of like an accuracy test and precision test. I'm not the best at zeroing in scopes, but I did what I can. So without further ado, let's see what this guy's got. Bruh. Obviously, it's user error as well, but as far as the actual grouping size go, it's pretty good for that range. We have one up here and then a couple off target, but overall pretty consistent little grouping right there. I wanted to do a second test at the same range, so I went ahead and did 10 more shots. Oop, my bad. <laughs> There's a couple of them that are definitely my fault, but I think most part they're doing pretty good. All right, people. So this is what we got. Uh, there was a couple that I completely missed, like the second one right there. But for the rest of them, they all landed pretty good in this little grouping down here. You know, some up there, one right there. And we even got one in that little yellow right there. User error is a big part of sniping. Obviously, my hands are really shaky right now. I need to eat some food. So obviously I'm trying my best, but not too bad for the consistent ones right there. That's probably a realistic grouping with this guy down there. Let's do one more at that range and then we'll mix it up a little bit after that. I think we might have gotten a yellow on that one. I definitely need to eat some food. My hands are definitely really shaky, so I could tell my you know scope is going like this and stuff. So uh, I tried my best. I hit uh, one right all the way over there, and then one all the way up here. But as far as the main ones, and I was pretty consistent. Obviously, they're lining up pretty close in this little like section right here. So not too bad actually. We're gonna go ahead and do some other different spots back here and see if we can land some cool shots. See if we can land this shot right here. Nice. 
nice. And if you guys were curious, uh, this is our position right here. Bravoy. All right, let's try a shot a little bit up here. I feel like a real snipey boy now. Don't forget to try out War Thunder using my link in the video's description below to take advantage of that awesome welcome bonus pack. Thanks again, War Thunder, for sponsoring today's video. Through the little woods. Keep in rapid fire and see well how accurate we are. So I kind of tried some different angles as you guys can see, some kind of like realistic weird angles that maybe snipers would have to actually go through within the game. And uh, yeah, actually pretty good. We got one shot out there, but all of the rest are actually within the circle. So pretty consistent, not too bad. And for reference, this is my actual hand uh, for the target comparison right there. So obviously, you know, pretty small target. Nevertheless, this thing actually performed pretty well. All right, so my conclusion on this thing is actually pretty good for hundred bucks. I think this thing is a slightly above hundred bucks. I think I paid 120, 125 bucks for this guy. I think it's cause it came with this little rail system on the top. And obviously the scope I already have, but this obviously costs some money too. So overall the setup does does cost over $100, but I thought it was pretty close to $100 and I would include it in this video. This thing actually had some really good reviews and obviously it shoots really good out the box and it has a lot of aftermarket support for upgrades on the VSR1 platform. So I thought this was a great choice for a beginner sniper.